should grow up. You should grow up. That's what I've been trying to do. The inner child has long appeared in film and TV as a cartoon of bubbly, innocent youth, serving to remind adults to have more fun and not take everything so seriously. Your inner child. What's it say? Food goes in here. It sure does. But is this what that child who never grew up inside of us is really like? In comedy drama How It Ends, writer-director Zoe Lister-Jones and Daryl Wine offer a more radically honest look at the inner child. You're so aggravating. Why are you being so intense? The story follows Lister Jones's Liza on the last day before an asteroid will end all human life on Earth, as she embarks on a series of comic visits to people with whom she has unfinished business. At her side is her younger self, played by Kaylee Spaney. I love that for you. And through this character, How It Ends interprets the inner child figure as a piece of the psyche that's holding on to the past pain of moments that were never fully processed and wounds that haven't fully healed. I do count, okay? Here's our take on how How It Ends offers a funny and useful roadmap for reconnecting with the actual inner child within as we process today's moment of collective societal grief and move on from an old world that's ending into our new, unknown future. So we're here chatting with Zoe Lister-Jones and Daryl Wine, the writers, directors, producers, and all-around creators of How It Ends. We're so excited to be talking with you guys. We really enjoyed this movie. We found it so funny and cathartic. Thank you guys. So we wanted to ask you how you went about processing your emotions during these dark times into comedy and how that led you to this figure of the inner child and the younger self. We were struggling, obviously, especially at the beginning of lockdown. We were having to be in conversation with our most vulnerable selves in a way that had never before been forced to. You know, that's sort of like what, what an inner child is, right? It's our most vulnerable selves and our sort of most historical wounds. How It Ends is now available on demand. Check the description for details on where to watch. In film and TV, the inner child figure is an exuberant nostalgic creation, traditionally imbued with the sage-like wisdom and effortless ability to see the bigger picture. The best way to spread Christmas cheer is singing loud for all to hear. But in How It Ends, the younger self's wisdom is not carefree or divinely bestowed upon her. It's deeply considered and hard won over years of watching the elder Liza in a state of arrested development after she stalled due to not processing her feelings about painful events. I can't grow up unless I have my own feelings, but your feelings are so overpowering that I can't have any of my own. So How It Ends brings a therapeutic conception of the inner child figure to cinema, inspired by Lister Jones and Wine's own experiences with therapy during the pandemic. In our virtual therapy sessions, highly recommended, a must. We were doing a lot of inner child work. Liza's younger self offers a level of insight and emotional honesty the elder has lost sight of, almost like a conscience character. I dub you Pinocchio's conscience and guide along the straight and narrow path. Liza has to make her younger self her guide so that she can at last get unstuck, heal, and grow up for real. All your life, you've been licking your wounds. You haven't realized that I'm the biggest wound of all. This insight of the younger self is balanced against a superficial, new age faux wisdom that we see some other characters in the film embrace. We do affirmations yeah. where we sort of shout things that we like about each other. Feet! I trained, you know, I'm Reiki One certified. Wow. Yeah. Almost none of the other people we meet seem to have a relationship with their younger selves. If you don't want to be with your younger self, you don't have to be. They've severed that connection. Yeah, I had my younger self here. He fell off the side of a mountain on a hike. So instead of having a guide with them to make this day the most meaningful that it can be, they look for pleasant ways to kill the time. A woman tries stand-up comedy for the first time but has no audience for her set. This kid asked me, oh, what's the homework today? I said, do whatever you want, you know? The only assignment is death. Well, that's, uh, that's sort of been my time. Another sits in the street singing a folk song about a lost friend but is crying out for someone else to sing it with. 
all lay gorgeous on a chocolate cake and a bottle of red wine, and almost everyone else is just trying to escape their sober selves. Each of these coping mechanisms aligns more with cinema's past conception of the inner child, the voice inside who distracts you from adult worries and reminds you to just have fun. But none of these distractions are effective in delivering any sort of closure or preparing these people for the rupture that's coming. Hedonism is also Liza's first idea of what she should be doing when the world ends. But Liza's younger self steers her away from an escapist approach to her final hours. Do you really think you should be self-medicating today? Why can't you just be present? Pointing out that Nick Kroll's tent guy, with his plans to sit alone and consume a shop's worth of narcotics, is a sad, lonely figure, not someone Liza should aim to become. You're calling him dark? You guys have the same exact plan for tonight verbatim. Talk about a ghost of Christmas future. Liza's most important step to grow as a person is to acknowledge that she and her younger self are one and the same, and she must treat both with respect and understanding. Liza's younger self tries to articulate this sameness, and it's in the moments where she seems to be getting through to Liza that she's her happiest. Tonight's the night! Come on! All right, let's go out with a bang. Conversely, they clash the most when Liza doesn't realize that how she treats herself is also how she's treating or mistreating her younger self. I'm your prisoner, and I've been your prisoner this whole time. So the main kernel of wisdom Liza's younger self offers is that it's essential to approach our inner psyches with self-love rather than self-flagellation. I have never been loved by anyone the way you have loved me, and I am so sorry but I haven't known how to love you back. The other key shift in how it ends depiction of the inner child is the insight that youth is relative. The other younger self we meet is a middle-aged man who's the younger self to a 92-year-old. I'm Manny, even though that's Manny in there. He's 92. Wow. 91? Something like that. This character's approach to his younger self is less about confronting past trials or mending old wounds, and more about looking back on a life well-lived. What are you going to do the rest of the day? Take care of Manny. Uh -huh. Talk to him a little bit about his memories and stuff. Ultimately, the wisdom of youth is not some magical, intuitive ability we're born with to see the world's profundities, but really more about the lessons that can be learned from hindsight. Listen, happy last day. Hey, try to remember me like this. <laughs> no, no. It's a joke. That, that's not how you'll die. No, is it? No, no, no. You'll wait to explode like the rest of us. Yeah. At its core, How It Ends is an expression of today's moment of reckoning with such collective grief and resulting social change that it does feel like the end of a world. The film was made during the early stages of the COVID-19 pandemic as a means of processing the emotions that the onset of lockdown brought out in all of us. And this last year was so heavy and, and dark and depressing and sad and brought up a lot of those feelings to the surface because you didn't have all those external distractions. On the last day on Earth, Liza is surprised to notice that other people can now see her younger self. And this reflects that, in the face of the pandemic or any radically challenging event, our deeper, usually repressed emotional selves come to the surface and have the potential to be shared. We have space to explore all the unhealed wounds that, when we're more actively out in the world, we rarely have the time to acknowledge. Suddenly you have all the time in the world and you gotta look at all of those demons. <laughs> Liza's journey also calls to mind a kind of grief therapy, with her grieving not only for herself, but for the end of life as we know it. We've been grieving for over a year, and I think we are continuing a pretty intense process of grief that I don't even think that we know, <laughs> you know, like the, the depths of. But whereas other apocalyptic movies present characters facing an end that really appears to be nothingness, How It Ends is more open to the prospect of an afterlife. Your afterlife is honestly unfair. It is unjust <laughs> how good it is. Or a potentially joyful next phase after this world ends. Pick it up in the next one. God, I hope so. We get the sense there will be another life post-destruction, in the same way that there will be a new world post-pandemic. There was always a lot of talk of like, can't wait to return to normal, and then that discussion of, of like, but no, actually, what can we learn from this? So it's not a return to to something that existed before, but but building something sort of entirely new out of the painful lessons that that we've learned. Grieving is about the loss of something and then the growth of something new, and I do feel that that is 
what we're about to enter and it does give me a lot of hope for new growth. My whole life has just been a series of regret after regret. You can face those regrets and turn them around. The inner child originated in the world of psychiatry and psychoanalysis with Carl Jung's child archetype model. Sherry Jacobson writes that it can be a way of helping us connect to the past as we recollect our experiences and emotions as a child. And this can then also help us mature and realize what we want from the future. While Liza has acknowledged her inner child to the extent that they're together, she doesn't acknowledge her younger self's full significance. But you're not alone, you have me. Man, you don't count, okay? You're metaphysical. She's avoided actually listening to what younger self wants her to do. I don't know why I even listen to you. Oh my god! When have I ever steered you wrong? I don't know, I've never really let you steer before. Crystal Raypole writes, The process of acknowledging your inner child mostly just involves recognizing and accepting things that caused you pain in childhood. Bringing these hurts out into the light of day can help you begin to understand their impact. You don't remember when this all started? When you were me and life started feeling like it wasn't worth living? At each step of Liza's journey, she is satiated by a feeling of catharsis, the releasing of repressed emotions. I actually feel so hurt. I thank you for too. hearing me. Processing the pain Liza's still carrying around from her childhood is a basic need that only the younger self is able to articulate. Shut the f up! Both of you! I need my mom! Another interpretation of how it ends as apocalypse is that it represents the end of childhood and onset of true adulthood. The phase when you must make peace with your younger self before you move on without them, as a healthy, fully formed adult. How it ends offers a therapeutic framework for moving from one life to the next. Liza's circumstances brought her to that place where she was ready to go to the next level. By acknowledging and confronting trauma, avoiding unhealthy and unhelpful coping mechanisms, and practicing self-love and self-care. I love the way you look at me, how you laugh with your whole body, how no one has taken that from you yet. The world might be ending, but if it is, you shouldn't numb yourself. You should feel it and go out as the best version of yourself you can be. Listening and talking to your younger self can help you become that. We also wanted to ask you about filming it during the pandemic, how you managed to get this cast full of amazing comic actors. Well, luckily, I would say every cast member is a friend. <laughs> and we were also really fortunate that none of them were physically able to shoot anything else <laughs> because otherwise they would have all been unavailable to us. We shot this fairly early on in, in quarantine and for I would say all of our actors it was their first time on camera and for many of them it was their first time leaving their homes. <laughs> I think to ask people to sort of try to have a sense of play amidst this very bleak and uncertain time was intimidating. It was intimidating for me too as an actor, you know, like could we go back to work? Because of the nature of the premise, you can show up and be your authentic self wherever you are on that day because we were sort of filming in a parallel emotional landscape. I loved the scene with Olivia Wilde. Oh, you just letting yourself to be subjected you know what I mean? to this kind of sub to say, like, experience. Just say my truth for a second. Yes, just that, like, I want that. When women get together and talk, there is so much excitability and hyper communication <laughs> that um, it's hard to like bottle it. Then there's this also like really intuitive listening practice that allows you to actually hear each other even when you are doing that. So I think we were playing on that and Olivia and I hadn't seen each other in, in many many months so there was also like a just a legit excitement that Olivia and, and Zoe had as like real people to be seeing each other and talking to each other. Spoiler alert but we would like to just talk with you about the ending of the film the significance of this final scene. I think it's about finding some acceptance some closure some reconciliation some resolve but I think she also accepted herself for where she was and that that was okay. And there has been this, a lot of talk with my therapist of, about sort of releasing the child, caring for her or him or them and being in dialogue so that they can then no longer be 
a part of you. <laughs> like it is about being like, bye bye, you've served your purpose and I and I've learned from you. And it's bittersweet, you know, because many of the markers over the course of our lives are about letting go of right. of childhood or of childhood fantasies or of childhood dreams. But in this way it's like really childhood pain part of the intention with that ending. She was finally heard so much so that we could like, you know, merge, that she could be released. That's where the smile and the elation comes from. How It Ends is now available on demand. Check the description for details on where to watch. I love you, Liza. I love you, Liza.